Good morning, everyone. Happy Independence Day. Uh, one, of, one of the things that's not in the bulletin uh, is about Roe v. Wade, and I think that's certainly uh, a praise that Roe v. Wade has been overturned. It's been something I know I've been praying for for a long time. Lots of other people have, too. It's great, but it's only one step in the battle. You know, we won that battle, but the war is still going on. There's a lot we have to consider. It doesn't make abortion illegal. It just lets it up to the states. So the enemy now is really firing up their attack. Uh, so we have to do the same. We can't sit back and just rest because we won a battle. So let's, let's keep praying about that. Next Monday, we have our youth rally meeting in the fellowship hall starting at 6.30. Uh, is this the last one prior to the youth rally? We might have one more, but the youth rally's in a month. Right? So if you can, come out to the youth rally meeting. Pastor Ott's official first day is in two weeks, the 17th. Board meeting on the 19th. I guess they're going to talk on the 19th about your official first day and how you did and if they want to keep you or fire you. <laughs> Congregational meeting on the 24th in three weeks. Uh, meeting after the morning worship. If you have homework due, get your homework to uh, the secretary by July 17th. And then the last Sunday of the month is Mission Sunday. And even though it's not Pastor Ott's official start time, he'll be speaking next week. If anyone's interested in membership, the applications are on the table out in the hall. Uh, please fill it out and get it to the secretary's mailbox. Is there anything I missed? All right. Let's stand and we'll read scripture. I'll read what's in a bulletin from Galatians 5, verse 1, and 13 to 14 from the NIV. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, and praise you. Uh, praise you for the chance to be here, for the chance to freely worship, for, over, for having Roe v. Wade overturned. I pray that ultimately abortion will become illegal in the United States. Be with our service this morning. Be with Mike as he speaks. Uh, speak to him and then speak through him. Pray that whatever he says from you, we will, uh, we will learn and internalize. And if he happens to say anything that's not from you, then I pray that we will quickly forget it. Uh, thank you for the freedom we have in, in the United States, for what this, this weekend, this holiday represents, Father. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, we're going to start off with the pledge to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And then we're going to start with the first verse of the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs>
our first scripture this morning. I will speak of the glorious honor, the majesty, thy majesty and wondrous works. And God called the dry, uh, Genesis 1.10, and God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. We're going to sing, Oh Beautiful, this morning. scriptures this morning, Luke 9, 23, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. And 1 Corinthians 1, 18, for the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. We're going to sing the way of the cross. Each go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way but this. I shall ne'er get sight of the gates of mine if the way of the cross I miss. The way of the cross leads home. The
must needs go on in the blood sprinkle way the path that the Savior trod. If I ever climb to the height sublime where the soul is at home with God, the way of the cross is home. The children of Smith Junior Church, and uh, we're going to try to play a medley in honor of the 4th of July. Um, I'll do the best I can, thank you. After which time Mike will then bring the message.
maybe somebody was going to read scripture, but okay, we'll follow it through, and it's up there. If you have your Bibles, if you want to turn to Luke 24 uh, in our message this morning, their direction determines your destiny. But before that, let's pray. Father, again, thank you. Such a privilege and honor that we could be here this morning and sing those sang, uh, songs about America. Lord, it's a great country, and we really love it, and we know that a lot of things are happening in our world that is, is not what we'd really like to have happen. Thank you for that Roe versus Wade overturn, and uh, we just pray for so many different issues that we have in America, and we just pray for her. And we pray for the Ovanies. We think about Carol and all the things that are happening in their life and the, the family there constantly at the hospital. We pray that you would touch her her body and, and the family there. And again, Lord, we ask your Holy Spirit to come upon us this morning as we study your word, as we look into these two individuals, but more important about the personal relationship that we could have with the Lord Jesus Christ, how important that is. And it's how amazing that you were to come to this earth knowing that we were enemies, knowing that we really didn't care and that you died on that cruel cross for each one of us as we think about Independence Day of America, but we do have independence as a Christian, and we're so grateful for that. We just got know that there's accountability and responsibility that, that we have because we don't want to be independent of you. Uh, we want to be dependent totally on you. And as we study our lesson this morning, I pray that you would reveal that to us. Again, we praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you have your Bibles and you turn there, we're going to be looking at this and I really love a lot of portions of the Bible, and some of my favorites is stories like this. We're going to look at two individuals here in Luke 24, and also if you know your Bible, in John 21, when Jesus went there uh, to uh, talk to John and the guys that were fishing, and Peter, Peter was really hurting, and these two guys here are walking away from the, the crowd. And I'm so glad of that, because so many times you and I, as we look at Scripture, you know, Jesus said that you search the Scripture for in them you think you have eternal life in there, which uh, testify of me. That a lot of times we take the Bible and we think of this Christian life is a lot of do's and don'ts and we have to watch our P's and Q's. But he wants a total intimate relationship with you and I. And this here uh, portion of scripture is going to bring that out very drastically. So here we are. We want to look into the hearts and minds of these two individuals as the scripture is there, as you can read it there. I said, now the same day, two of them were on their way. Uh, to a village called Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. Together they were discussing uh, what had taken place. We really don't know. We know the one man's name was Cleophas. We don't know if this was husband and wife or uh, just a friend. And they were in Jerusalem, and at this particular time, it was the time of the Passover. Many things were happening. It was a festival of seven days. They went there. They probably saw the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, maybe the triumphal entry. They probably heard about the miracles he did, how amazing it could have been like you and I go somewhere and see something that's uh, really outstanding and the, all the things. And then all of a sudden, they heard this noise and commotion, uh, the crowd, and maybe they saw the Lord Jesus Christ being crucified and things were happening there. and uh, So many things were happening in their life. And in seven days, all this transpired of how the things were going. And I don't know about you, but sometimes in my life, we have highs, don't we? Things are going so well. Maybe we're going on vacation or maybe we're doing something and we get in a violent car wreck. Uh, maybe the person that we're with, the loved one, uh, dies. Or things happen. I mean, just the other day, I was with Kevin Obaney. We were working at the church, and he got a phone call about his mom. Uh, we never know what transpires. So here are these two people. They were walking home, and they were talking about all the things that were happening, how things were just accumulating and all. And all of a sudden, it's like you and I hit a brick wall. All of a sudden, their whole world came to an end. The person that they thought would come and make life easy for and maybe take them out from under the Roman government or what was ever transpiring in their life, that everything would be erased, everything would be great. And all of a sudden, it came to a screeching halt. I don't know about you, but I know one time, 2 o'clock in the morning, I got a phone call uh, from the Baltimore Police Department that my daughter's car was found in the church parking lot one of the worst sections of town down in Maryland, in Baltimore, and they want to know where she was or what happened, and here I am, you know, uh, 80 or 100 miles away, 
being woken out of my sleep. My daughter, I have no idea what's going on. You know, what do you do in situations like that? And here these guys were going. And it says, while they were discussing and arguing, Jesus himself came near and began to walk along with them, but they were prevented from recognizing him. Again, I really like, you know, scripture, because here, why didn't they recognize Jesus? You know, he had to have from the thorns, he had to have uh, his hands, you know, were scarred. He wore sandals, so his feet were exposed. Should have seen some marks on his body and different things. You know, I'm glad for that. And why do I say that? It's because you and I today look at this story and we don't see Jesus personally either, do we? No. So what it tells us is that you and I got to live by what? Faith. Faith in the Son of God and by the Holy Spirit. Later on, we're going to find out that they're talking about Jesus uses a scripture for them. And, you know, there's times in your and life that we go through great difficulties, don't we? Well, and I say to the Lord, where are you? You know, that poem where the guy questions the Lord, where is he at? There's only one footprint in the sand. And he said, Jesus said, I was carrying you through. I don't know about you, but there's many times in my life I look back that I know that the Lord carried me. You know, and I'm glad that you young people are here this morning. And we're going to look at this lesson today, and it's a lot about hope that we have hope in Jesus Christ. I know a lot of kids today are committing suicide. A lot of kids with the school system, a lot of things that are transpiring in their, are in their uh, schools are going different than what we think they should go. I'm so glad for the time period that I lived in. I think it's one of the greatest of all times, but times have really changed. So here these guys were, and Jesus walks along. You know, Proverbs 13, 12 says, hope makes a man's heart sick when it's deferred. When it, the hope that you and I base our part, life on. You know, you go out, I, I, I had a Mustang car in 1970, Boss 302, and back then, uh, two years later after I had it, I put a, a thousand dollar lacquer job on it, which back then is about eight or nine thousand today. Beautiful car, had all my hopes and dreams. I wasn't a Christian at the time, and I took it and some guy went and opened his car door on the side of my car. You know, and I went ballistic, you know. And I thought, I put my faith and hope in something that it doesn't last. When I became saved, I sold the car because of uh, all my memories that I had in it weren't always good. But how about hope? How about your hope in your job or your business? And then the company foreclosed. We've seen a lot of that lately, didn't we, with COVID-19. Or maybe they tell you you're too old. Or now with the new technology, I'm lost. Being a carpenter, I don't use a computer. Uh, I don't know a lot about lasers. I use them to some degree. Uh, I'm really old-fashioned, I guess. But today they have the computers where they can design a house, the colors, the carpet, the furniture, you know, without even being built. And how about inexperience or maybe your job, you know, now that computer technology took over, you're inexperienced in your job. Or maybe your retirement package. You, you worked there for 30 or 40 years and the company, because of your package, because of them, uh, you lost out, and it's not what you thought it would be all those years that you had. Or how about your hope in marriage? You marry that beautiful individual, and something happens, a relationship goes sour, divorce, or that loved one dies. Uh, just recently at our church, we had the grief uh, course for people that lost loved ones at all and went through a time in their life where they had a grief. How about in health? You know, we hear about COVID-19 now, and Lyme disease and, and arthritis and cancer and all these things. You put your uh, hope in life. You know, I, I, we were just talking at church to a guy that I played softball with. And I can't even remember those days. I can't even pick up a bat and swig it. Probably five things would go wrong, you know, tear something. Or I ate for three days after. So we see a lot of things were happening there. So Jesus came along, and then he asked him, what is the dispute that you're having with each other as you're walking? And he stopped walking and looking and discouraged. Why are you? What's going on? Then one named Cleopas answered, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that happened here in these past days? You know, could you have been a stranger that it was such a great event, there were so many things were happening, and you don't know what was happening, you missed everything? Sometimes I say that to myself, don't you? Things happen around me, and somebody will share with me, and I said, I don't remember that. I, I didn't know that happened. Sometimes there's things that happen in our life or around us that you and I are oblivious to. We don't even recognize what's going on or what's happening. 
And, and a, a lot of times that's with the Word, isn't it? The Word is doing so many things in our life, and we don't even recognize that. We don't even take time to, to vision what's happening. And what's even worse, many times we're not even grateful or thankful that he did that. And sometimes the Word has to do something in our life. I think that's happening in America today. I think with the wildfires out west, I think with the storms, I think with the drought situation, I think with the school shootings, I think with some of the violent crimes and all, that, you know, you and I, we just didn't put God into everything. You know, with Roe versus Wade, abortion and stuff. And then we wonder, uh, this morning I had a lesson in Haggai 1, talks all about that, that all these people, why things weren't going well. And God says, because you don't recognize me. I'm a slice of your life. I am not the center of your life. And he had to discipline them. And God disciplines you and me sometimes because we don't realize what's going on. And let's read on, please. Yeah. Okay, so that, it, it jumps over because I thought someone was going to read this and it'd be too much. So they were telling about all the things that were happening and what was going on. And then they didn't understand everything. They said about the woman went there and, and he wasn't there and so many things were happening. And then here's what Jesus said in verse 25. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, it's so hard to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter in his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them all the scriptures, the things concerning him. Again, I think that's so irrelevant for you and I today. Because he didn't show them his hands and say, hey, it's me, and be done there. He went back to the beginning of Moses. He went back to the scriptures. And that's where you and I need to go back. You know, he said it wasn't uh, foolish for not believing a woman's report or not believing what some people said or not believing the rumors about maybe Jesus wasn't in the tomb. He said they're foolish. And, you know, I learned something studying this, that if you give man great facts, and we hear about that all the time, about history, right, and great facts, and religious theology, people talk about religion, you know, but if you don't give him the risen Savior, what do you have? Empty life. My life was that way. I went to church, another church till I was 22, head altar boy. And I had historical facts about Christianity. And I had the scripture. I used to go up front in front of the people and read the scripture. And there was times I would say to the priest, what about this? And he said, don't worry about it. They don't have their Bible. Just skip over it. And that used to bother me. And then I had a Christian friend who witnessed to me for about eight years. And then I, made, I dated a girl, and I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. But he's saying here that they were foolish for not studying the Scripture. And we got to ask yourself, how much do you know the Scripture? Now, let's take a point of history at this time for these Jewish people. These Jewish people were waiting for a Messiah. It's not like the Messiah that you and I are waiting for. They were waiting for a Messiah that would come to take them from under the Roman suppression. They were looking for this Messiah who would be like King David, conquer their foe. And they were looking for, like you and I are, Independence Day of their day and age. So when Jesus came, they only saw his first coming. His first coming was not to do that. His first coming was a more important issue, is that was our soul. The sin that you and I had to redeem us back to him, to have a relationship with him. Now, you and I know by studying our Bible that he's going to come back again. It's going to happen. And you and I are looking forward to it sometimes. Sometimes we're not because we have loved ones that don't know him, and we want people to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. But he's definitely coming back 100%. Matter of fact, there's more scripture about his second coming than there is of his first coming. So he says to them to go back to the word of God Moses and the prophets, and he expounded to them. How about you and I? You know, do you and I understand the scriptures? And your de direction in life determines your destiny in life. The Bible says there's only two roads. One is wide, and we look at that. You know, even in churches today, I'm really sad when I read the paper, editorials, 30 seconds. I don't do it too often. But these churches that are compromising the word of God, talking about it's okay to have an abortion. It's okay to be homosexual. It's okay to be all this. You know, we, we're living, you and I are, as Christians are living in the dark ages. We've changed so much. It's all acceptable. No, it's not. And the word of God, and we love those people. 
We're not arguing them. You know, it's just like they're going down in the road in a car. I'm not trying to stop their car. I'm not trying to jump in front of them and protest them and everything. I'm just trying to tell them that I love you so much that the bridge is out in front of you. And the path that you're going, it's not going to be very pretty. That's all we're telling them. You know, we're not racist. We're not trying to go against them. We're trying to show them that their lifestyle is a broad way. I look at it this way, a funnel. Picture in your mind a funnel. Those people are looking at the funnel from the big side to the narrow side, that you and I are narrow-minded. You and I are looking at the funnel from the narrow end to the bigger end. My life is exciting. I wouldn't trade my life for anything in the world, what God has done through it. And yet, when I meet him in the air, I die or meet him in the air, my funnel is going to be so big, it's going to be amazing. Read the book of Revelation. So Jesus said to them, so then they drew near to the village where they were going and it indicated that he would have gone further, but they controlled, controlled him saying, abide with us for toward evening and the day is now spent, and he went to stay with them. So what does that mean? That means a relationship. Jesus would have walked on by if they wouldn't invite him into our heart and life. You and I must invite Jesus Christ into our heart and life. Revelation 3.20 says he stands at the door and knocks. He will not come in. You've got to open the door. I'm so glad that he kept knocking on my heart. I don't know how many times people have witnessed to me about the Lord, and then one day the light bulb came on that I needed to accept them. And that's what we're talking about this morning. These two men were or men and women, we don't know. They were downcast. They didn't know which way to turn. They didn't know what the next direction was in their life. And maybe you're at that point. But it says there, they said, would you abide with us? Would you come in? You know, just like John 21, Peter was going crazy. He said, I'm going fishing. And I'm a type A personality too. I would have done the same thing. I can't sit at home. I would have went out fishing. Something I knew, something I enjoyed. And Jesus met him on the shore. Why? He wanted that intimate relationship with him. What about you and I? You know, this morning in ASAP, or uh, I'm sorry, when we talked about Haggai, it said in there that the time has not yet come. People were doing their own thing. They didn't feel like worshiping. They didn't feel like serving God. They said, we, we don't have time for that. And if you would analyze how many minutes of the day, how many hours of day and week we have, how much have we spent abiding with Christ? Thank you that you came to church this morning. Thank you you set this time aside. So we look at it here about that. And our brother said about 1 Corinthians 1.18, about for the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them, but to all which is saved, perishing, foolish, the entire failure to be what God wants you to be. The disease of sin destroying your soul and you and I. And then about being saved, that he rescues you and I. There's a big difference there. To be on one side where those people are perishing. It's just like cancer in their body, eating their body cells away. But you and I, spiritual life. You know, Jesus didn't say we're foolish for not believing that, but the prophet and the word of God. And he says there that now it came to pass that he sat at the table with them. He took the bread, brushed it, and broke it. And gave it to him. Their eyes were open, and then he knew him, and he vanished from their sight. Have your eyes been open to what God is doing in your life and what you see God doing around you? Have you have spiritual sight? We know over there in Jude and other places it talks about that Satan has blinded them. Satan works in their lives, and Satan wants to destroy them. You know, I was thinking about Thomas. You know, Thomas said, hey, Lord, you know, he wasn't there, and the disciples said, hey, we saw the Lord. He said, you know, I, won't, I want to see it. I want to put my fingers in his hand and put my fingers in his feet and in his side where it was pierced. And then later on in them verses of Scripture, uh, when Jesus appeared to him again, you know, he didn't even have to do that. He saw the Lord. And the blind man, as we talked about in John, when the blind man was there and Jesus healed him, he didn't know who he was, and then later on, he met Jesus, and Jesus said, do you know what happened to you and about being blind? And he saw the Lord. How about you and I? You know, we could go over there in Luke 2, which Simeon was an old man, and Jesus came, uh, Mary came with Jesus to be, for him to be uh, circumcised, and she held him up, and Simeon took the little baby, and what did he say? He said, my eyes have seen your salvation. Have you seen the word salvation? 
And then later on, the little Annas, the prophet there, she said the consolation of Israel, the one who would come, who would comfort them in their times and troubles and so on. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scripture? You've got to ask yourself, and I ask myself this, when I read the word of God and I open up the scripture, and when I come to church, does my heart burn for God? Do I really feel his presence, or do I come here because the thing to do? When I was youth leader, a lot of people were upset at me because I challenged their kids. Don't hear, come here because of your mother and father. Don't come here because it's the right thing to do. Come here because of Jesus Christ and having a personal relationship with him. Because someday you're going to be away from your parents, and they're not going to be there watching if you go to church and watching if you have your devotion, that you need to know the direction of your life, because that's going to determine the direct destiny. Are you really on the Lord, Lord road for Jesus Christ? So it says there that he opened up the scriptures and they saw it. And we need to open up the scripture. Then they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem. You know, that scripture came to me about twice, in 1982 and 92. I was in Gabon, Africa, in the jungle. And there, I was right on the equator, and the sun comes up within a minute and sets within a minute. And the Africans would go in their tents and they would lock their doors and because of the uh, snakes and, and different things that would happen there. Us dumb Americans, we had flashlights, we were out walking around, you know. And, but that showed me something. Again, they were seven miles away from Jerusalem, and the Lord impacted them so much that they walked back to Jerusalem at night in the dark, which you just don't do in third world countries. It doesn't happen. Uh, two years ago, I was on a, a feral pig hunt in Texas, and they told us, do not stay out after dark. Do not walk around too much at night. Uh, some of the wild boars will gore you. Uh, they had three different venomous snakes there, and they were really upset. And one night I was out by myself on a different farm and they dropped me off and I had to walk down in and they all left and they went about five miles away and some, one of my friends shot a real big trophy pig. And they said they wouldn't be back to get me for two hours and it was dark already. And I said, you know, I'm not staying here. I just can't sit in, you know, in a confined area. And I put my headlamp on and I carried my AR and my judge, which is a scatter gun, basically. And I walked out two miles, stupid. I got yelled at by the, by the manager. He said, don't ever do that again. But I just wanted to get home. I was hungry and I was thirsty. It was like 95 degrees and stuff. And what puts you out of your comfort zone? What pushes you to go on what you should go on? These men walked seven miles back because they were so, so excited about the Lord Jesus Christ. What about you and I? How much have you gone out of your way because of what Jesus Christ did in your life? God transformed this life. And that's what the scripture's about. It's not about you and I learning. It's not about you and I studying. It's that you and I are transformed by the word of God. How are we doing? What was the last time you went a distance for the Lord? When was the last time you shared what the Lord did for you? God impacted these two individuals' lives so much that they went out of their comfort zone and they went to tell other people what Christ has done. So here we are talking about Independence Day. Here we are talking about how things are so good in, in and through our life. And they return. You know, we don't need to walk away from the cross. We need to embrace it. When I study the Bible, I want to know what lessons did I learn from it. And it's good for us to be talking of Christ to learn more of him and encourage one another. Just like Hebrews 10.25 says, forget not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but even more as you see the day approaching. This first really hit me about two years ago with COVID. The pastor and I was the only one in church doing the videos and, and the preaching and, and Sunday school because everybody else was scattered and all. And now I'm so glad that God gave us that we could come back together and be a church and, and have fellowship one with another. And especially more, we need to hear more and more of the word of God because days are going to get worse. I hate to tell you that. Scripture tells me in the last days it'll wax worse and worse. 
I don't have to tell you too much, just read the news. If you believe in the news, what's fake and what's not, you know? And then second, those who seek Christ will find him. You know, poor Peter, he denied the Lord, things happened, and the Lord was going to go away from him, and then he went out fishing, caught nothing, things weren't going very well, and then all of a sudden the presence of the Lord, and then the Lord three times brought him back because he denied the Lord three times. You know, he'll show himself to us. He will fellowship with us and help us to know the truth. Things will happen in our life. You know, and there was, as we talked about there, that the burning in their hearts. You know, you and I, we have that warm, warm glow fire in our heart. It's soothing and it's comforting. But we know, like the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man, the burning in his heart was burning judgment. And people will find that. So we need to come together. Jesus uh, said on the cross, it is finished. Everything that Jesus did on the cross was done. He could have went home to his father. But he was so concerned about Peter. He was so concerned about these two individuals that even though it was finished, the work of salvation was finished, fellowship in him is not. It's forever going. It's going to be eternal that you and I are going to abide with him and be with him. You know, Isaiah... There in chapter, he saw the Lord in chapter 6 sitting on the throne. John in Revelation 4 saw the Lord sitting on the throne. And someday, if you're saved, you and I are going to see the Lord sitting on the throne. And we're going to have intimate fellowship with him. And we're going to, this Bible, will know it inside out completely because of what he has done. And again, it's not what Jesus did. It's not what Jesus said. But it's him. It's him. And that, that scripture there in Matthew 5, uh, 39 said, search the scripture for them. You think you have eternal life, but they testify of me. So it's not just that you and I have to study and memorize scripture. It's not that you and I have a list of do's and don'ts, but that we'll have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, again, thank you so much that you walked seven miles with these men. Lord, you'll walk seven miles with us. And they had questions, they had doubts, they had fear. Or their, their whole life seemed to come to an end. Uh, maybe they for years prayed about you coming and you came. They heard about the virgin birth and the, and the birth of you. And they saw you, maybe in person. Maybe they were one that took of the, the meal, that you broke the bread, the 5,000. And then when you broke the bread again, uh, they had this image of you that it was definitely you. And Lord, you proved himself over and over of 500 or whatever that you rose from the dead. But now today, we got to walk by faith. We got to put our faith and trust in you that what happened then is happening today and going to happen in the future. And we don't see you except what you gave us the Holy Spirit, and we're grateful for that. And we have the whole written word of God, not just parts of it, not just Moses and a couple prophets, we have 66 books that we could study about you, your person, and your character. Again, I want to praise you and thank you for all you're doing for us. And I pray a special blessing in our life that, not that we heard these words today, but that we could apply them to our minds and our hearts and our lives to further serve you, but more important, to feel your love in and through us. Again, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Uh, it was a wonderful message this morning. Please rise with us as we attempt to, as we sing our closing song. You know, a lot of people, like he said, a lot of people, they find things out there that they like, that they're happy with, people they know even that they're happy with. But the greatest thing is to know the Lord and to have him in your life. in all
our pastor if he would dismiss us in prayer. Lord, we thank you, God, for gathering us all here together today to hear your word and to worship you. Lord, we thank you again, God, for the freedom that we have to gather in this nation. And Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us in this life, we thank you for the gift of salvation that you freely offer and that we have received.